TV. What's going on, you breeders? Max here. And C-Bomb. Max and C-Bomb coming back at you live from the Fear Factorium, Australia's number one Fear Factory Museum. Make sure you check it out on Instagram. Check us out on Instagram. Now, this is the second part in our series of interviews where we're chatting to the production team behind Fear Factory's new album. Who are we chatting to today, C-Bomb? Get excited. Today we are going to be chatting to none other than the drummer of Fear Factory, Mike Heller. That's right, we're chatting to Mike Heller today. Now, Mike's had an extensive drumming career. Um, he's the drummer in Malignancy, he's the drummer in Raven, and of course, the drummer in Fear Factory. Now we're going to be chatting to Mike today about his drumming career, um, the new album, and the big upgrades that it's got since the 2017 recording C-Bomb. So, there's only one thing to do. Check it out. Let's get into it. New Breeders, please welcome for the second time on New Breed TV, the absolute gentleman, Mr. Mike Heller. Give it up for Mike Heller. Mike, how are you? How's it going? How are you doing? Good, good, good. How are you, man? I'm doing very well, thank you. That's enjoying, good. That's good. Enjoying the uh, break. <laughs> What's up? You what? Enjoying the uh, the break that uh, this wonderful time gives us. <laughs> oh yeah, it's been great, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got some beautiful, nice light streaks coming down there. I just, I just have to tell you that I appreciate that. Good lighting. Good lighting. Yeah, it, looks, it looks looks cool, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now. Um, now, this is the second time that we've actually spoken to Mike on the show. Um, I caught up with him at the last Raven show here in Adelaide, and Raven has just put out a new album, Mike, called Metal City. How's Ooh. that been going? Tell us a bit about that. Oh, man. Um, well, uh, <laughs> interestingly, um, I recorded that album in 2017, and uh, <laughs> it, finally, it finally came out. Um, very very excited about it. very happy about it i think it's awesome it turned out great um and it's as far as i can tell doing really well um yeah. people, are, people are buying it and enjoying it enjoying the yeah. artwork that was insane yeah. uh to get all accomplished but uh thankfully i had well, a... the comic the comic book style cover mm -hmm. oh the, whole <laughs> thing is the comic book by the way uh like oh. each page has its own like specific panel drawing for each song. Uh, it oh, was uh, it was a real complicated thing to get together, but uh, I'm very happy yeah. I did it, and I think it works really well. Looks great. That's really cool. So is that is the comic book in the CD booklet? Yeah. So it's it's not like uh, the way you think about a comic book. It's not like oh you know the guys are going here doing whatever. No, it's more like. Each page, the lyrics are the like the action. So there's, you know, uh, whatever um, the scene might be for whatever the song title is, which the song titles were and the songs were written way before the comic book idea came in. And then I thought, uh, hey, why don't we uh, kind of like make one panel that will sum up each song in some sort of way? So like, you know, uh, it's tough to describe without seeing it because it's yeah. That's really I get what you're saying. That's that's an awesome idea. I don't think I've ever heard of a band doing that like a before. Have you? No. <laughs> that's wicked, man. I don't know if I've ever seen another band do that, but uh, you know, I felt pretty pretty smart when I came up with the idea. Yeah. Um, so that was a Mike. That was a Mike Heller idea, was it? It was. It was me. Uh, <laughs> me telling the guys like, hey. Why don't we try something that's like shows the fun element of the band? Because you know, yeah. there's a lot of dark imagery that they were going for a little bit before this, and it's like this shit. Okay. It's, it's so fun. It doesn't need to be dark. It should be bright. Yeah. Well, not happy. Yeah. But, you know, and we're. Uh, I was going to say when I like listening to the album, um, it is a fun album, man. Like it is like it is a good like it is a good time. You know, it's upbeat. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's fun. It's like it's energetic. It's just it's that. And I reckon the um I reckon the artwork 
really suit like really suits it. Oh yeah, I I strongly recommend that you uh, find a way to check like read along to the lyrics and, and, <laughs> and check out the, the artwork while it's happening. Oh, yeah. It's really cool. I think it's a cool immersive experience. You know, yeah. back in the day when people used to buy the records and stare at them and yes. stuff. You know. Yes. That's, well, that's what we. That's what. Um. The first time I ever did that was with Obsolete, reading along with the lyrics. So yeah, that's sick, man. Good job. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I did that with Solo of a New Machine and Demanufacture for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, cool. Um, it's a bit of an experience to actually sort of listen and take in the the album artwork and lyrics and stuff. I think that's somewhat forgotten. Yeah. It's, it's definitely forgotten, and that's really sad to me because, I mean, yeah. you know, I have so many CDs. I love just being able to, like, okay, I want to I want to devote my time now to this band. I mean, it's different when you're, like, listening while driving or something or listening while, I don't know, working out or whatever people do. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah. you know, just trying to, uh, you know, really – I've always been really into music, so I, I just kind of want the whole experience. I want to – open the page, read who's in the band, read, you know, yeah. that, you know doofy information about where things were recorded. <laughs> I love all that. And I always, yeah. uh, I think this, uh, the Raven record is, it's a really cool experience. Cause again, you have like artists uh, plus the band's interpretation of kind of the song. Although um, sometimes I didn't go too literal to what the song was about. I usually came up with the idea and was like, hey, guys, what do you think if we, if we do this kind of thing? And they're like, uh, that could be really cool or that's a terrible idea. Uh, <laughs> we just run with it that way until uh, I guess we came up with something we were all happy with and then um, yeah. made it work. But like, that's kind of, I don't know, I think that's cool. Let's like, even if it was just, let's say, you know, people put out a lyric video for a song or something. Um, at least that song would have that particular artwork, so it would be appropriate. Yeah, yeah. At, at, at ties at ties the audio and the visuals together, and then when you put out a film clip with those visuals in it, it just expands it even more and becomes even more of an immersive world. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think it's more. It's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I love that stuff. It's great. Oh. So. So what um what sort of what got you into drumming initially and what were some of your influences and bands and stuff like that like while you were learning um can you tell us a bit about just sort of how you got into drumming Sure um so somewhere along the lines of 94 I think believe uh, it was um 1994 or something I was always super obsessed with the first uh four Metallica records um, and I loved, you know, Anthrax and Megadeth and a little lesser extent at that point, Slayer. But, um, those like, it's funny cause the big four was kind of like, oh, that's my childhood right there. You know, um, yeah. I, like I, at that point, I didn't know anything about the smaller bands. I didn't know they existed. If you know what I mean? I was too young, yeah. really young. Yeah. Um, the, the, big, the big ones were all you could say. Yeah, exactly. Um, Though uh, though when I was way way younger, um, uh, my my brother is four years older than me, and he got a, a Twisted Sister tape, and uh, <laughs> I took it from him apparently, and I would just play it all the time, like constantly, I guess, because uh, once I actually tried to listen to their music years later, I knew it like the back of my hand, and I couldn't recall like why <laughs> do I know every. <laughs> Thing that happened here. Like, why do I know the drum beats when I didn't? Mm. I never thought about the drums before. Like, you know, when I was six or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's crazy. But either way, they're in your, um, they're in your head, man. It's unconscious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, basically, essentially, it boils down to um, listening to Metallica a lot and and hearing Lars and just thinking it was the coolest thing in the world. Which is funny because you know Lars. <clears throat> anyway, um, cops, a, cops a bit of, he cops a bit of shit but yeah. he's a, he's a, he's like i reckon he's a good drummer he fits you know he fits what he plays and he does so much more in that band than just play drums without lars that band 
for Metallica sure. Metallica would be. He's like, yeah, he's a driving force in that band, and I respect that, man. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, mm. um, you know, back when I was, I don't know, what, 12 or something, I had no idea about anything involved with any of that. It was just like, <laughs> oh, man, like, listen to that. Oh, that's awesome. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Picking out some certain thing, and I mean, well, honestly, like Lars is playing on those first four records is still awesome. I mean, w yeah. regardless of how long it took it took him to actually perform that, it's still awesome. And uh, yeah. Charlie from Anthrax for sure at that time was like huge on me because, well, it's really funny when I once I actually started playing, you know, so like I had all these records, well, tapes. Um, and I was listening to them constantly. I'm like, okay, I want to play drums. I, I don't know. They just they just spoke to me, right? So uh, I started playing the drums. You know, first got your little rinky dinky snare drum thing or whatever. Um, but then when I graduated to like a drum kit, I remember, okay, I'm gonna try to uh, play these Anthrax songs. And it was like, nope, not happening at all. Like, <laughs> no way. But I could play Metallica songs. So it's like, all right, I'll stick with that. You know, like, that's a lot easier. Um, I, I guess when, like, I was always really, I, I wasn't one of those people that, well, obviously I pay a lot of attention to detail. So it wasn't like I wanted to just kind of play the song. It was like, okay, what's he doing? Like, can I figure out what that thing is? Oh, okay. So yeah. All right. I want to make it, I want to make it that and, and not try to like, uh, skip out on on anything or whatever but then uh i mean after a while it was you know only metallica is all i could play for a minute um <laughs> and i started uh like delving out more into uh, honestly things like typo negative which uh was really helpful because you could figure out what was going on easily and it's slow um yeah and uh life of agony i really love life of agony and uh those kind of bands, but really, like the reason I started playing drums was Lars and Charlie from Anthrax. Uh, <laughs> so, like one, yeah, it, it's very interesting to me because uh, some of that still comes out in my playing. Um, a lot of, like Lars had a lot of weird quirks and really cool fills, so it was yeah. like, just like every 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 time you think he's gonna go to a symbol. He doesn't, and then he goes to the symbol after the hit. Yeah. Classic. Classic. Yeah. Signature. Um, yeah. I call him, I usually say he's just like one of those random crash symbols that I try to do a lot on uh. record. It's funny. <laughs> You'll hear that every once in a while. It's just like, oh, why did that? I don't know why that happened, but Lars yeah. made me do it. Lars made, Lars me, made me do it. <laughs> Uh, that's wicked. No, that's 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 the history of his origin there. Mm. That's it. That's it. Awesome. Well, I'm going to ask this one just for all the drummers out there. Can you give us a bit of details about your gear and endorsements? Uh, yes, absolutely. So, um, happily endorsed by Tama Drums. Um, awesome. And Minel Symbols. I should have a Minel logo hanging out somewhere. That would be nice. And um, <laughs> Archie Capito Pedals. The Polish company that I can not really pronounce their name. Tarchi Capito, <laughs> Sartsi, something like that. I don't know. Either way, the Devil's Hook, cool. and they're awesome. Cool. Um, how long you been? How long you been with them for? Um, I'd say I think uh, all of these companies probably now around eight years, uh, minus the Tarchi Pedal Company that was a couple years later. But it feels uh, like it feels like a long time. It's been it's been well, great. I've been I couldn't be happier with any of this stuff. I mean, like amazing drums, amazing cymbals, and amazing pedals. Like, what else do I need, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. All right, so in we'll get on to a bit of Fear Factory now. <laughs> so in 2017, um, the album originally had program drums on it. Now, Damien said in our interview that he gave you the skeletons of all the songs um now did you add a lot of flair and was there collaboration sort of back and forth with you and dino and damien about like bits and did you add all your little you know did you add a last bit here and there <laughs> okay well um here's the thing about that in 2017 um yes there ended up being a drum machine 
mostly on the album or on what would have been the album. But yeah. what actually was, was I was asked to record drums, um, but that quickly turned into, wait a minute, can you just record cymbals? And I was like, no, I'm, uh, that's, I'm not gonna do that. That's ridiculous. Like fake Weird. drums and real cymbals, like that's, that's yeah. what the hell is that? So um, I came up with a compromise of, I'd record the album with electronic drums and real cymbals. But the caveat was that I gotta play exactly what the drum machine did because it was pretty much like done, I guess. So um, I, I begrudgingly was like, all right, I mean, I guess. Um, and so I did that. And so it would have essentially been, they just deleted the like the electronic drums and it was the drum machine with real cymbals. So they got it their way, I guess, but uh, when yeah, I, okay. it, I actually, uh, I'm not talking about Dino, just so you know. Um, Dino hated this idea from the get-go, but uh, right. acquiesced, and uh, this is what we end up with. Because at first, I even I did a version with like live drums, and I got the feedback of, um, oh, I, well, from Dino, he loved the parts I came up with and the things I did, but he, uh, it was producer engineer guys or whatever uh, that were no longer involved. Um, come now. Um, that were like, uh, actually, can you just do what the electronic drums did? Like, exactly. Uh, and I got really, like I said, I got really discouraged. Like, I've been with yeah. for how long? And you're making me just do exactly this? And Damien, exactly, programmed skeletons. So he wasn't expecting me to do it exactly like this bare bones, kind of like lame drum machine version. Um, I mean, it was really funny because I remember sitting there recording this stuff, just going like, this is absolutely ridiculous. I'm, um, cause I'm, I had to literally do note for note. So mm. he would just like kind of plop a symbol in there on his electronic, you know, on the, on the drum machine, just like, yeah, symbol, 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 symbol. And so instead of, you know, crashing a symbol that makes sense, it would actually go like, <laughs> like hit. Yeah, okay. So I'd be yeah. trying to sit there, play this shit going like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life, you know, like, you know, doing all this really goofy shit that at the end yeah. of the day, I mean, it ended up, it sounded okay, I guess. It sounded, to me, it was really goofy, but I was like, all right, whatever. I mean, is this what it's gotta be? This isn't, this is what it's gotta be. So essentially when um, they refer to it having a drum machine on it, yeah, mostly. I mean, I did play everything and, uh, you know, again, all the drum parts, like the, the toms and snare and kicks and stuff, that was all deleted and, all right, here's the uh, electronic stuff, but it had my real symbols on it that I recorded back in New York when I still lived in New York. Anyway, yeah. um, so fast forward to this recording and the songs had changed, um, thankfully, for the better. Uh, the drum machine, <laughs> was still like a drum machine, but I was hearing my cymbals coming back at me going, ugh, you know, like, again, hearing <laughs> parts that made yeah. absolutely no sense here and there. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, again, it wasn't, it wasn't like they were bad. It was just that, you know, the way of the program works, he didn't, he purposely told me, he's like, I didn't, you know, go nuts with this, expecting you to do it. I did it as skeletons, I was expecting you to expand upon it and do it your way. Yeah. Like a guide, like a guide track for you to use, so you know what sort of beat and like the, what the kicks are doing and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So then, yeah. again, imagine that being on the album, and that's honestly um, kind of the way that people wanted it. The people that aren't Dina. Um, so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Basically, what happened this year is Dino called me up and he's like, hey, do you want to put real drums to this finally? I was like, yes, okay, best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, basically, Damien gave me these skeletons. And again, they were like, some things had changed, drifts had changed, everything got better, you know? Um, in a way, I was a lot happier with just the songs to begin with, because um, I thought, it seems maybe it was kind of rushed before, 
You know what I mean? Like, yeah. not. Yeah. You know, it was it was good. It just wasn't like awesome. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now the new versions of the song, it was of the songs. It was just like, oh, all right. Now we're talking. You know. So um, yeah. I did. Um, you know, Damien gave me skeletons, right? So most of the time. Uh, obviously the kicks in the snare, well, the kicks write themselves. It's what the guitar does, right? So yeah. you can't do something that's not that, although I did get away with some stuff. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. You know, like there's, um, there are kind of, there's, there's not much room really in a Fear Factory song to like go nuts. So my jazz fusion death metal guy stuff doesn't apply most of the time, yeah. but, yeah. um, there are unique parts on this record that I could not believe I got away with. Um, so <laughs> essentially, um, yeah, there, everything was back and forth. So I do, I'd record a song and um, basically Damien and Dino would listen to it and go, all right, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe you did a little too much over here. Um, and uh, actually straight up, um, I didn't have I didn't have the vocals as I was recording, so I didn't know a hundred percent where they would be going. So I kind of just had to like play to the riffs, which is kind of what Fear Factory always did anyway. Yeah, but sure. um, there were <laughs> certain parts where I'm like, oh man, this is just big and open. So I know drum solo. So <laughs> I straight up uh, <laughs> recorded a drum solo, essentially at the end of one of the songs. Then I, then it turns out that that was supposed to be the chorus, and I was like, "Oh, oops. <laughs> so um, it was it was cool. So it's inspiring, and it made me want to do all this stuff, right? And like, you know, human, not machine, like yeah. human element, right? Um, yeah. But of course, then they were like, "Oh, here are what we think the vocals are for this part." I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Okay, let me let me redo that in a way where I don't just like destroy the whole concept yeah. um, so they, so the, so there was parts where you didn't know where the vocals were going so you weren't really sure how to complement them because you didn't know what they were like exactly okay. um now that's like that's not abnormal that's in fact 99 percent of the records i record that's how it's done um yeah. so it's kind of like you know, I want to do my Lars accent, the vocal part, less than the riff, but I can't. So usually yeah. that's what I say. I do my random crash symbol because, you know, hey. Um, but uh, <laughs> on this record, yeah, most of the time it was, uh, okay, the vocals are being, like, um, worked on and sort of retooled. I guess there has to be, uh, you know, whatever had to be done, I don't really know um but uh i know it's like it's the obviously it's the original vocals that burt recorded in 2017 right so yeah. um i'm assuming they were probably just combing through takes and finding the best sounding stuff and uh you know doing that but you know maybe who knows it could have had like uh different versions of a chorus or something so they couldn't just give me all that and be like well we hope this is what it's going to end up being you know what i mean um yeah although as of now I'm assuming the finals are all final and everything's good. Um, yeah, it's, get, it's getting very, very, yeah, it's getting very close to being finished mixing, I think. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that means mm. vocals are set in a nice way. Um, but yeah. so, yeah, essentially there were certain things back and forth that they'd be like, oh man, okay, yeah, you're doing this thing. We like it. It's cool, but it, it just kind of goes against what um, the vocals are doing. I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. let me hear what the vocals are doing. Cool. So they'd send me like a snippet of that. It's like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, no problem. I'll uh, play to that appropriately. But um, I mean, the, 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 the truth about Fear Factory anyway is, is that Dino pretty much has dictated what the drums do since day one, you know, um, as far as I know. I mean... It's been a lot of like, oh man, uh, okay, so the, the riff does this, you know, play to that. And, oh man, try the snare here. Oh, try it over here. Try this, that, the other thing. So uh, yeah. with Genexus, there was a lot of the same, it's kind of the same approach as this, except for um, that I, like, here are the songs you have, uh, I don't know, I think it was like seven days to 
change, write like your part, your version of it, I guess, and record like a crap demo. And then we'll listen to it and see what we like better. And, you know, just whatever. But that was all at once. I had like seven days to work on it and then recorded the album in two days. Um, yeah. yeah. So whereas this is entirely different because I kind of, I kind of recorded it before sort of, right. You know, I mean like a version of it. Um, so you were more, you were more familiar with, with the songs sort of this time because you've, you worked on them before and then now you've revisited them and you've got, you've, you've got them in your head and you sort of know how they go sort of thing. Is that right? Well, well, sort of, because it was more like um, as soon as I finished the, you know, the playing fake drums, real cymbals debacle, I was just like, forget this crap. And I just moved on. I'm like, I can't, I can't deal with this. This, I, I hate it. It's personally, it was just not. So you, weren't, you, weren't, you weren't feeling it. No. It's not at all. Version at all. No. It, and, and it's not so much that it's like the songs were not there. Because, I mean, you know, the songs were still you know, a, a different version, but still the songs and like, you know, they weren't bad. You, I wouldn't sit there and go like, oh, this is just garbage. But when you're, you're ba I was basically like, you know, oh, well, you're not allowed to do anything anymore. So I just lost all interest and it was just like, you know. Mm. So there was, and there, was, there was a bit of a different dynamic going on in the band back then. Um, in, in terms in terms of who was in charge and who was making the decisions and stuff that's is that right yes gotcha. um, and I mean there was a lot of you know outside influence on certain things I guess as well that you know oh okay well this guy this engineer guy is telling me all right well yeah you don't play cool stuff even though Dino literally like an hour before called me up to tell me that my parts were really cool on this one version, uh, and then it's like, oh, no, actually, you're gonna have to not do that. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like too many bloody, too many bloody cooks in the kitchen. Yes, uh, <laughs> and and no one and no one and it, and it doesn't sound like there was um, effective communication between everyone working. It sounded like there was a bit of a uh, power struggle going on, and no one was really uh, working together and talking and collaborating properly yeah um i mean as it was weird because i've always you know dino's always been the guy i talked to you know um i mean like i was always friends with everybody else in the band and all the techs and the crew and and the manager and you know this you know the sound guy everybody i've I was always been yeah. friends with everybody but the thing is when it comes down to like all right business plan and things like that i'm at that point, I'm the drummer, you know what I mean? So it's just like um, they they hatch their plan, they'll figure out and uh, what they want to do, and then they'll let me know. And then I'll sort of, uh, well, are you busy? Can you do this kind of thing? Like, if you're busy, yeah. we'll uh, hope, I mean, hopefully they'll <laughs> work around me, which they did yeah. much. But yeah. um, still, it was just that, yeah, like um, a lot of uh, a lot of things that were happening. And I mean, like, Again, I don't want to. I don't really know the inner workings of the way everybody would always communicate. Like I said, I like I talked to everybody and I was friends with everybody, but there was never, uh, you know, I just stayed out of the business part of things. Like always. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Not my place. Yeah. The band has existed a million years before I joined, so I, like, <laughs> what input do I have? None. I just play drums, man. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So. In that regard, yeah, it seems like um, okay. Well, this guy wants this thing, and this guy wants this thing, and you know, I would side with Dino because Dino writes the music, you know. But um, at the end of the day, people want to. At the end of the day, people want to save money, or they want to do whatever they want to do, and then you know, some things suffer. And yes, uh, yes. Thankfully, at least this year. Um, I get the call of, yeah, okay, you want to do real drums. And of course, like, finally, you know, so that means yeah. essentially um, it's like it's reinvigorating and I can care about these songs that I literally never listened to since 2017. It was just like, I, I don't yeah. want to know that album. I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Kind of sounds like the process kind of left a bad taste in your mouth. And now that 
now that Dino's pretty much 100% in control now, it's like he's got he's got a clear vision and he loves like he loves working and collaborating and he loves that you know he loves that interaction and stuff like that it's not it, it feels like it's it's a bit less um businessy and a little bit more collaborative and a bit more like working together and well, you guys are you're <laughs> vibing it now you know you're really you're vibing well that's the thing it's like all right so still dino will you know essentially he'll be in charge of essentially i'd say like 90 or 80 85 to 90 percent of what the drums are doing right and then it's like how can you add to this sort of thing um so it's not like a hundred percent collaboration of like let's sit in a room and jam um it's more like yeah. you know he uses uh, damien to program stuff to like get his ideas out which i understand because like uh it would be a lot of a lot of weird back and forth and like Oh, change this part, change this part, change this part. And at some point, you know, there's no way I wouldn't be like, all right, you know, <laughs> like that's a, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like how many times do I have to learn? Because a lot of these parts are they're not normal, easy things. Okay, the 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 kick drums I can do, the hands I can do together, not so much, at least on yeah. the newer stuff. Like everything up until the industrialist, everything was all very doable, you know, human, very human, like no problem. That's how, you know, uh, for my audition, I could learn three songs in um, like four hours or whatever it was, you know, like, yeah, it's, it, it, it plays like drums, but the newer stuff is very different. Like, I don't know if uh, I really, I'm very sure people don't recognize that um, because like it would have been made mention of essentially like um when we play live there's the really easy songs which is everything up until the industrialist and then the really hard songs which is the industrialist <laughs> the genetics. so it's like yeah. yeah i might have come up with a bunch of the parts for uh like regenerate or something but i hated playing it at some points because this is like it's so Oh man, I got to get this right, and and like it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of like stuff that you wouldn't really know is is really difficult if you know what I mean because it doesn't. Yeah, sound it's, it sounds great when you listen to it. Yeah, but it's not. It doesn't sound like it was drummer friendly to play because was not. <laughs> yeah, gotcha, um, gotcha. And that's the thing about this record is it has a mix of both. Because some stuff, it's like, yeah, all right, cool. And like I said, I could just get away with stuff that I wasn't. And by that, I mean, like, you know, do cool fills and, like, add little intricacies and stuff that the sure. band never had before on any record, um, which yeah. is what I was always trying to do in the first place. Like, let me, like, if you're going to have a different let drawer. Me, let me sprinkle a little bit of hella magic in there. Yeah, a little bit. You know, <laughs> I'm not trying to, again, I'm not, like, it's not jazz fusion time or whatever. Though there is a little bit of improv on this record, which I could not believe they were like, oh, that's cool. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean that's cool? You mean, <laughs> what you mean is go back and do it exactly like the machine did. No, no. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that's good. Sounds, um, like a, sounds like a bit of a struggle of man versus machine, C-bomb. Man versus machine. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's perfect. Yeah, because, struggle. I mean, like, Dino loves what he does and he works with the machine and he makes it like his. So to him, he's not concerned if like, Oh, can a drummer play this? And now yeah. I've never encountered anything that I can't play. It's just, there's a difference between like playing D manufacturer and stuff, which is easy and fun and stuff. And then playing some of the other songs was just like, Holy crap, you know, like mm, getting all this, these weird, you know, there's a lot of weird um, hits, like you're, you're playing one place here and then you have to like be in another place all of a sudden. And it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's weird. It, it's like, uh, I mean, you get comfortable with it over time. So yeah, at the end of, of some touring, yeah, some of those songs are like, all right, yeah, this is cool. We got this one now. All right. But at the <laughs> beginning, like, holy crap, like, 
All right, here we go. Um, some of it's pretty damn inhuman. I mean, I think it's you might actually sort of hear some of the influence of Gene and Mechanize drumming that sort of come into those albums post Mechanize. It did sort of get crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah. The part about that is that Mechanize is by far the easiest stuff to play. Um, oh. Because all it is is like rolling double bass. It's not having to go, you know, it's all just like, you know, just like roll, you know, fucking like that stuff, which is, you know, any death metal, no problem. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's interesting yeah. to hear. I didn't didn't sort of appreciate um, how, for a drummer to pick up the mechanized material. Whether that would be challenging or not. Oh yeah, but, it uh, was, um, uh, Fear Campaign was the first song they asked me to learn, which I learned uh, in two hours and shot a video for. And they were like, "Yeah, okay, we're gonna fly you in tomorrow to audition." Like that yeah. was it. Like, like I'd never heard the song. Like, okay, that's not true. I heard it in passing, but I never, I could never recognize that you're you've heard the song before. It was, um, oh, Fear Factory have um, a record with Gene. I don't. I don't know if I want to hear that because I loved Ray. You know what I mean? Sure. You know, yeah. How I worked, it was just like Ray is the sound of the band. Although it's you know Ray and Dino is the sound of the band. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, when when Gene joined, I mean, I loved the Death Records he was on. I like. I was a big fan of that, the Strapping Young Lad stuff. But um, in Fear Factory, that doesn't seem like his thing. You know. Um, so. What's actually interesting about that record is that it, yeah, it might not be his thing. That's why that record ends up being like it is, which is like a lot of rolling double bass and like stuff that a drummer would do far more yeah. kind of everything else, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, it, yeah, I know what you mean. It kind of sounds, that album sounds less programming and more drumming, more, more of a, more of a, what a real drummer's touch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and that was the thing. That's why it's the easiest stuff to play. That it's just like, okay. just do human stuff, not worry about <laughs> the inhuman, the Fear Factory stuff. Just worry about like playing drums like a metal drummer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, gotcha. So, yeah. like, those songs were always like, you know, again, I, I'm, I can't say that like playing D Manufacturer isn't fun. It's not particularly difficult it's just about playing super tight that's always been my goal that's why uh i mean over the history of me being the band people watching youtube love to talk about how i look bored and like i'm not moving or whatever and it's like <laughs> okay i don't know have you ever tried to have you know going <laughs> and move? okay he doesn't even need a drum. No. Need a drum kit. <laughs> I was going to say, I, your tightness does come through. Like for me, since you've been in the band, I think I've never heard their live drumming sound quite so on point. So kudos to you for that. I appreciate that. I mean, that's because he. That's because he concentrates. <laughs> exactly. He's sitting. He's sitting there making sure Absolutely. that he that he's perfectly in time. And that's like that takes a lot of. I'm guessing that takes a lot of like mental like you know skill and con strange. and concentration to really like try and play tight and nail it yeah and what was very interesting about most of the time we were touring is um i actually had a foot injury in my right foot where i i, I essentially lost the arch for my foot oh. so essentially i had to on tour kind of relearn how to play sort of a so, like, use a different technique with your right foot yeah i was at that point yeah um yeah. like like the arc just fell out essentially which is really weird because if old fear factory is simply right foot all the time and like filling in with the left foot uh, oh, yeah. so i'm doing all this right foot stuff but i couldn't hit as hard with my right foot as i could with my left which might like i'm a i'm right hand dominant so I'm playing all this stuff like with a different technique with one foot as opposed to the other. And I literally, that's why in the beginning, I mean, okay, in the beginning I was like nervous, of course, because I've never played in a band this big, et cetera. Um, then I got comfortable with it. Then it was like, oh, no, now everything is going to suck because you have to just like 
stay completely still and use different muscles than you're ever used to. And now nobody in the band knows any of this because the thing that was the whole point to me was that I could play the songs. I, I, I played them, you know, they sounded good every night. I would inject the right amount of groove and feel and everything, but I couldn't move an inch. I was yeah, yeah. Stuck, right. Because I'm <laughs> going to use an entirely different technique than I'd ever used. And I'm like figuring this yeah. out. Go. It was, it was a really, it was really uh, stressful, very frustrating. Yeah. Uh, and either way, I mean, at the end of the day, it worked. I watch, you know, videos or I hear any of the stuff that was recorded from any of that time. And it's like, damn, I mean, I, I wouldn't really have noticed, but then you look at me and you're like, <laughs> oh, <my>. um, <laughs> You well, know. what do you what do you know? Mike Heller is actually human. Yeah, <laughs> give yeah. him a break. And now yeah. my foot works again. It took some exercises and a lot of uh, physical therapy and things to figure out what was up, and now it all works. And it's like, ah, okay, back to fun. Not that I'm gonna sit there and you know like do windmills while trying to play Fear Factory song. <laughs> I could never do that anyway. But uh, mm -hmm. certainly, I'll be able to you know. Um, have a bit more fun and yeah, maybe move a, little move, more. A little, move a little bit more. Yeah, because <laughs> watching you, watching watching you at the Raven show, oh mm -hmm. man, you were like, you are a different dude behind the kit. You're like, you were just like, you. Were, it was party time, man. Yeah, well, exactly. The thing with Raven is that it's all like, it's just fun. It's totally different yeah. experience. I don't have to play anything exact. You know, mm -hmm. I don't like mm -hmm. with, with Fear Factory. I'm just making calculations the whole time, and like, <laughs> you know, all, the, all the numbers are just like going across your face, and you're yeah. just like <laughs> working out quantum theory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and with Raven, it's it's just like, dude, have a blast, have fun. The guys love <laughs> that. All I want to do, I improvise a lot. Like today, the song will have blast beats because I feel like it wants to have blast beats, <laughs> and, it won't. and they're like, they love it. They love it. They're like they're jammers. They'll they yeah. don't do everything the same either way. So it's like it's just a blast. It's just having fun. Oh, it's a fresh, and, keep it interesting. Yeah, yeah. Right? but it's such, a, it's such a contrast. <laughs> well, yeah. Could you imagine in Fear Factory? I'm just going to change the kick patterns today. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yeah, yeah. I had that good idea. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, that would be like, all right, you're fired. Get out um, <laughs> immediately. You know. Uh, <laughs> I like here's the funny thing. I can recall one show, no, two actually. One of them is actually in Australia, um, where I like really screwed up kick patterns, like really bad. Um, in fact, one show I played shock and just never changed the beat. I like complete brain fart. It just like ruined my life. Um, I couldn't <laughs> like, I don't know what was going on. To where like I, I didn't do any of the parts anymore and it was just like i don't know it, it was well insane amounts of jet lag is what i'm assuming happened but either way um so that happened and that like killed me i was like backstage after the show throwing shit around and you know oh, yeah. I'm like dude it's not that bad it was one song everything else was spot on i'm like no nah! you know it's a perfectionist yeah, yeah very much <laughs> And you, put, um, well, and you put a lot of pressure. It sounds like you put a lot of pressure on yourself to be a perfectionist. Absolutely. Yeah. Like a hundred percent because I mean, what is fear factory? If it's not that like mechanized, um, the, the machine tight, you know, that band. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah. you know, so I'm playing to a click and I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to get everything, you know, the space oh, yeah. the notes to be perfect. Right. So that's my job. And I'm like, I got to play it like the record or um, in the case of some of the older songs like that weren't as tight, just tighten them up, right? Um, but that's what I'm there for. Nobody would wanted me to like move and do anything. You know, like, let's hear what you would do instead. No, no, nobody cared what I would do on those old songs because that's what they are. So do that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And yeah. um well, the weirdest thing for me, it was that simply that like all I am is a creative, you know, guy like all I love writing, writing and recording is my favorite thing in the world to do. So like 
at first, you know, when, when I got the random call of like, Hey, do you want to audition for fear factory? I was just like, uh, uh, there's nothing. I, there's nothing in the world that I can imagine. I would fit in less than fear factory as a drummer. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. And yeah. then they were telling me all these guys auditioned and they didn't get it. So I was like, Oh cool. I'll just be one of those guys who auditions and didn't get it, but it'll be awesome. <laughs> to jam with them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. um, and so you know i mean that's literally why i did it i just come off tour with uh malignancy which is my band of 17 years um yeah. and immediately like got this call and was like oh sure and two hours later like i said sent in a video so to me it's like it's uh it's a very different world playing with Fear Factory because, well, I, I guess I love that, that I get to be different people for different situations. You shouldn't see the guy in Raven and think it's the guy from Fear Factory and vice versa. Or I'll add malignancy into that. I mean, you should not in a million years ever think the malignancy guy is playing Fear Factory. Like it, they would not work in any way, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I guess I, I kind of pride myself on my ability to just be the guy who's right for whatever situation. And yeah, um, right. impressive. Versati versatility, very impressive. Mike yeah. Heller, the chameleon. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Although um, me as a person, um, I'm like the guy in malignancy. That's a lot of me. That's just like go fucking ballistic and play everything under the sun and just have a blast and like go nuts. I mean, that's me as a drummer. So with Fear Factory, it's like, Forget all that shit. Do <laughs> this and you know get really tight feet. And it's like, all right, sure. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed the challenge until my foot got screwed up, and now yeah. I enjoy the challenge again. So it was recording this stuff was like, ah, you know, this is this is cool because it's like it, it doesn't. I don't have the pressure of my foot not working. If you know what I mean. So sure. uh, yeah, um, that would have been a, that would have been a big relief recording this stuff like be just being comfortable to play it yeah oh yeah and and that was the thing it was like um you know okay i know it's it's got to be it's got to be perfect it's got to be exact um everything's got to be like super super tight and there the, you know there's there's an amount of pressure that comes with that but you know when it's flowing when you're like when you're playing and it's you know, easy to play well, then it's suddenly like, ah, okay, I can open up, I can have fun with this. So there's a lot of like, there's still feel, even though it's Fear Factory, if <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's sort of, uh, you know, I think you can you can probably hear on this record that I'm having fun. I hope. I hope you can hear that for the most part. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Then there's okay. you know, then there's the one song where it's just like. All right, here we go. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> at least one more. Um, and, uh, regardless, it's it's still like it's a uh, yeah, it's it's fun. It was a lot of fun to record. Um, I really, you know, I dug it. I loved. I I know you got essentially like one question. We've been just answering this one question for like an hour or something now. But uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it's, 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 information. Appreciate it's, it. It's mostly Dino. You know, like Dino does all that that's what he does um yeah. so yeah like you didn't hear much of gene on gene's record either it's not really it's just you know knowing who his drummer was he wrote appropriately to that if you know what i mean yeah. um yeah that's I, mean, a... I mean i could be mistaken i don't know but uh i mean that's how i understand it to be so when it came <laughs> i remember um Damien telling me he's like so Dino just said um do whatever because you can play anything and I was like well thanks but what you know like <laughs> you know I need, like, I, need, I need something are we going half time are we are we <laughs> blasting what are we doing here <laughs> I mean you know so like Dino um you know Dino would have Damien actually at some points record like oh you know he'd say like oh yeah Mike has like a million hi-hats and he has you know, he could do anything we want him to do, so just go nuts or whatever. And it's like, okay, at some point, sure, uh, I, I am human, but um, I think on this record, the way it ended up now, um, it's that I only added things. I never really took anything away. It was kind of like, 
oh, it'd be cool if I, you know, if like this little part was in the, and yeah, let me try some of that and that type of thing. But um, I just remember, yeah, I just remember again, Damien, like, well, you know, he's, he told me to go like program all this crazy shit and just make you play it. And like, let's, let's not do so much because I still have to learn it, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, and then I have to, I mean, if I'm going to interject my own stuff, which I'm very, uh, I, yeah, I kind of have to. I'm one of those people. I'm like, it's got to yeah. be somewhat of me, or I'm not going to feel it. And yeah. you know, like, even even when I'm I'm doing pop records and stuff, you're you're still yeah. going to hear a little bit that's like, oh, it's yeah. me, you know. Um, yeah, and, and 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 so you should. And I think by the sounds of it, Dino's like Dino's perfectly cool with you doing that because, well, he gets it, man. He gets it. Yeah, I mean, he he knows. Like, it's um, it was like, you know, I was hired because I can play this stuff really well. That's what they want, right? So, yeah. at the end of the day, even if um, you know, even if they didn't like anything I added, they still know I can play it. So there's not a concern really. So I guess yeah. with me, it's it's kind of it's a more relaxed atmosphere, if you know what I mean. Than um, yeah, yeah, the the confidence in you is there. Yeah. Yeah. So um, therefore, you know, so, sure. Sometimes I might add a drum solo instead of a chorus, whatever, you know, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, they'll like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Happens. Hey. Happens. But, uh, but like I said, there's still stuff on there that I'm like, I cannot believe you let me do that. Like I just, you know, again, I would just record what I wanted to record and then have them talk me down. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. The easiest way to do it rather than, I'll play it exactly like the drum machine. Then you'll love it, and then you won't let me add anything. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna add everything I want to add. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll just play, I'll just play my thing, and we'll have the discussion after and see what you don't like, and then we'll sort of work back from there. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. And <laughs> I would not believe that at least some songs were like, "No, that was awesome." Like, what do you mean? No, I cannot <laughs> believe you. Um, so, so that Mike got a, a few a few um, balls through the goalie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. That's a good thing. Cool. Um, but I mean, you know, again, like that's that's uh, what makes Fear Factory entirely different from everything I've ever done, and I'm assuming everything I ever will do. That it's like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's very yeah. regimented, and it's got to be yeah. that. Um, so now, um, I mean, like I built in some spots and some songs that are like little improv sections. So now the only question is, is Dano going to want me to do it exactly like I did it on the record? You're going to have to remember, you're going to have to remember all of that little, because I know what it's like. You like, you know, a lot of that stuff that you do so quick. Details. It's like, oh shit, how many times did I hit the ride? And then how many times? <laughs> Exactly. It's a matter of like, you know, in the moment you do what you what you like. Yeah. That's what I sent him and he loved it. So it was like yeah. shit. Okay, now either I have to absolutely figure that out or I can just <laughs> do that same thing and kind of improvise slightly. It's not gonna, you know, it's yeah. not gonna, the snare is still where the snare is, the kicks are still where the kicks mm -hmm. are. It's just the extra stuff that makes it cool to me and yeah. it doesn't need to be exact. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, okay. So just, but, I don't think the audience would be so critical. Like I think when you see bands live, if something changes a little bit, that's good because it kind of keeps things interesting. And yeah, you know, yeah. if you want to listen to the record and hear the the final version of the perfected song, you can do that. But live's a bit different. Yeah, yeah. I, I I feel the same way. I never uh, I never really cared to see you know a band do exactly their album. No, you know, like I mean, in in some cases. I get it. But like, you know, okay, for, for, for instance, with Fear Factory, it's like, okay, sure, the drums are going to be what the album drums are, but it's going to feel different. It's going to sound different. It's going to be a different experience, you know, like mm -hmm. fit that particular time. It's not going to be exactly the same every time. You know what I mean? Like, it's still going to feel live. And that's yeah. why, like, that's what's cool about it. I mean, yeah. sure, I put all the pressure in the world on myself to try to play it like as I'm in the studio and I'm just playing perfectly. And that's kind of how I always did it. But it, it like, it, obviously Dino loved playing with me. Otherwise I wouldn't 
be here, right? So uh, right. I'm doing the job, right? I'm doing what I'm asked to do. Uh, yeah. so, you know, I'm not, I'm not like, uh, you know, I'm not reinventing the wheel like I get to do all the time in Raven or Malignancy or everything else I do. It's just the situation where, all right, do it like is appropriate and nail it. And that was my yeah. job, you know, the whole time. Yeah. So, um, I again, I, I appreciate that I was like somehow able to do that because I always, I, like, I never thought that was me as a drummer. So it's it's always been mm -hmm. cool to just put on that particular hat, you know. Um, <laughs> But awesome. Okay, that was a like eight oh, hours uh, answer to your questions. <laughs> question, question four. <laughs> no, good information. Very that was very good. Insights. Appreciate it. All right, um, question four. Here yeah, we question go. Four. Here we go, Steve. All right, so we, we'd like to see some pretty awesome drum parts in some of the studio updates that have come out. Um, so we're just going to ask a bit about where they were recorded and yeah, where did that take place when you were doing the recording? Right here. So here we are in my studio. Um, that is the kit I used. It's, uh, well, different snare drum, but aside from that, same exact thing. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I recorded it here, which meant essentially that's why, unlike Genexus, when it was, okay, learn all the songs, and then we're going to this big studio, and you just got to perform, and again, just I think I did 11 songs in day one and like three songs day two. Uh, uh, whoa. You, you haven't heard all of those songs, uh, obviously, um, because uh, I don't think there are that many on the record. But I don't know. That just tidbit for your information, I guess, that there's some other stuff that maybe one day will come out or maybe they just didn't like it in the end. I don't know. I don't know what happened to it. Yeah. But uh, either way, um, then there's uh, here where okay, Mike, uh, here's the song, you know, record it or whatever and send it to us and then we'll go back and forth, right? So I got to do whatever I wanted, like I said. Uh, so you gotta, you got to spend a bit, and is, is this your studio? Yeah, my studio. Right. Um, so you got to sort of, you got to sort of hang out at home with it for a while and get to know it and, you know. Yeah, well, it's it's funny. The way um, the way I really like to, to record a lot of stuff is just like, um, so day one, you only work on one song. You live, breathe, eat that one song, and you make it the best thing in the world. Um, you spend the whole day, you know, learning it, trying to figure out what your parts are, and then recording it. And then the next day, you do the same thing with another song. Um, oh. And then, uh, obviously, stuff that uh, if like that's the funny thing. I got the songs. It was like got the songs. All right, record them, kind of thing. It wasn't. Um, Got the songs, okay, you got like six months to, no, none of that. It was just, just go for it. So I did right then pretty much. Uh, I had yeah. to finish up another record that I was doing and then immediately, bam, here I go. Um, and so, yeah, I, I basically, uh, I try to do like a song a day. I ended up doing more than a song a day. Um, but again, I was writing my parts to it and stuff. So it's different than if you're, uh, you know, if I ever got to rehearse the songs, then I would just go in do 11 in a day or whatever, like I did with Genexus. But here it's more like, uh, there's no pressure on that at all. I can just take my time, try anything I wanna try, come up with a thing that I like and then send it off and then have them go, yeah, a little too much on this here. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yes, that did happen a bunch of times, by the way. But, um, uh, it's a still, process. you know, yeah, exactly, yeah. It's a process. Um, Dino doesn't like those ghost notes, Mike. Okay, all right, so no ghost notes. All right, sure, fine. You know, like I would do things that Fear Factory doesn't do because I would just feel it that way and try it. And uh, at some points, you know, it's kind of like me saying, all right, so Dino, I think you should just shred over this part. It was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what, that didn't happen, you know? So therefore, yeah. it's like, no, no, do Fear Factory. I'm like, cool, totally, totally understood. But, but uh, yeah. you know, I like I I put up um, a passive aggressive fight to Damien every once in a while. Like, oh, man, it was awesome. He's like, I know it's awesome as a drummer, but he <laughs> knows like vision of how this works. Maybe not awesome. Like, all right, sure. Fine. Uh, <laughs> but either way, yeah, like uh, that, that's the thing. I mean, like I have. Um, I spent more money than I ever thought I'd ever make in my life on 
gear and this room and like, I mean, I'm in the middle of downtown LA and uh, there are helicopters and shit going over this building all the time and stuff. And I can't hear anything. It's like, I have my little wow. sanctuary. So wow. did you, did you like build your studio? Yes. Well, it was, it was a, a garage that I converted um, wow. with a lot of money and a lot of time. And I don't know how I got any of these things because uh <laughs> It was, it was kind of, it was insanity. It was insanity, and it's like you know, I would go on tours with Raven and stuff, and like come back with money and like cool, just dump it immediately into the studio and that kind of stuff. And I've just been doing that for a few years now, basically, um, That's awesome. to build it up to the point where it's like you know, uh, hey, this um, this studio is pretty much like as good as any of the commercial studios in in the area for drums, minus the fact that it's you know, it's not gigantic so i can't get uh you know like the john bonham <laughs> yeah. I can, always, I can always put a bit of reverb on that <laughs> <laughs> exactly um i can do uh essentially anything that like i'd ever want to do minus john bonham thing sure i'll just hire out a an aircraft car hangar or something and you know <laughs> do it there but um yeah, yeah but here i have like all the gear, I, I I never thought I would have any of this stuff. Like I never thought I would have gone this route, but I just came up with the idea at some point of like, I want to be able to just stay home essentially <laughs> and record every day for whoever, you know, different people all the time. And I've done like, since I did the Fear Factory record, it was a couple weeks ago. Um, I've done like, I don't know, nine other albums <laughs> or something like that since then. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll, change wow. I'll change the drum heads and anything I break, you know, but like yeah. keep going and keep going. Like anyone else asked me for something that I'd like, sure, uh, I can do that and record. And then uh, it's actually the funniest thing is that um, since that, since doing that record, it's the one time I've like kept the same thing going for more than one record. I said the snare has changed, but uh, you know, aside from that, like, oh wow, the same setup. Cause this setup with a million, there are four hi-hats live. I was using five with Fear Factory, um, <laughs> uh, but I'm using the four hi-hats. It well, unless of course, one of those things was like a, a nice, you know, pop rock thing. So no four hi-hats, just turn those mics off and stuff and play over here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, like, it's it's honestly the only time playing like the Fear Factory kit on other projects and stuff, and it's worked out really nicely. Although, um, you know, like the the Fear Factory kit and the Raven kit aren't the same. The Fear Factory kit, the Raven kit, and the Malignancy kit are entirely different. Um, so, like, I could not play. Uh, I could play. I could possibly play Raven songs on the Fear Factory kit, and vice versa. But I couldn't touch malignancy. So I couldn't do that in a million years on this kit. Like, not in a million years. So I need yeah. more drums to set up in other locations and stuff and have uh, other things going. But um, at least, you know, in my studio, I can track. And all I've gotten uh, was essentially insanely positive feedback of, like, everything sounds amazing. It sounds like, uh, I can't say it sounds like a real studio. It is a real studio. You know, yeah, yeah. So yeah. um it's it's amazing. I'm like again, I did not un did not realize I would be doing all this, but I'm so happy I did. And uh yeah. I well, if, really it's it's the yeah. cool it's, it's cool. like it's oh. like if you build if you build it, it'll happen, man. If you build it, they will come. Yeah. And yeah. dude, that's always it. always always works. Always yeah. that's how I've I've kept busy during all this weird crap that's going on in the world um, mm -hmm. is essentially, you know, like, well, all musicians are home. Aha. So let's, let's uh, start talking to some guys and uh, yeah. you know, let's, let's get some weird things going. So I have some like new projects and new craziness and recording albums for a ton of bands because yeah, everybody's home. So like yeah. everybody's wanting to do music. So it's kind of awesome. And yeah, yeah. I don't well, miss touring at the moment, so you know, awesome. Yeah, well, it's good that you've it's good that you've been able to um, keep busy. Yeah, keep busy and use the time because you know 
a lot of a lot of people. It's it's the complete opposite for a lot of people. So it's good that you're able to, you know, yeah, do and, what you're doing and, and keep and stay productive and make the most of it. Yeah, keep and keep your you know keep keep working so you can you yeah. know keep food on the table essentially. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I'm mm. I'm super lucky in that. But the interesting thing is like, again, I spent every like red scent I had on this place. So without doing that before, I don't know what the hell I would have done. You know, like yeah, gotcha. Um, it's like, man, uh how, yeah. Kind of, kind of glad I did that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very glad I did that. And um yeah. but that's the other thing is that I don't even I don't go out in the world, hence the you know hermit beard at the moment. Um <laughs> I don't go out anywhere. So I just like Every day, come down to the studio, record, then go back home, kind of thing. Like that's my day every day, um, yeah. and it's the coolest thing in the world. And so, awesome. You know, when, uh, when the Fear Factory record came up, it was like, sure, let me just slot it in between this other thing, and I just had to push one thing a little further back. Like, hey guys, uh, uh, I got to do a Fear Factory record. Do you mind if I do that right now? And they're like, oh no. Take your time. So cool. Do a fear factory record, uh, and then still get back to that other stuff. But I did spend a little more time with the uh, um, the fear factory record over. Well, I, I can't say like I spent more time with it than I'd spend on anything else. It's just that um, I knew there would be a lot of going back and forth, so I I wanted to a lot enough time that I could do that. And even though I did, I don't know. Uh, a lot of the songs I did, I did two songs a day a lot of the time um, because, well, I don't know. I did one and then I don't want to wait to see what they want. So I'll just do the next one and, you know, have a blast with it. Um, yeah, awesome. And it worked out nicely. But uh, again, that's like very unlike what I normally had to do when I would, um, yeah, okay, you got, you got two days in this studio. That's all you got. So hopefully you get everything. And that's why I went nuts and got 11 songs in one day for Genexus. It was just like, uh, I don't know how much time. Okay, just fucking go. Yeah. You know? It had to be done. It just sounded like it had to be done. Yeah, and it, it did. And that was the thing, I did so many the first day that it was like, well, what is there left to do for the next day? So, uh all right, well, yeah, finish that other song that I know that was going to be on the record. Cool. And then there's like, should we, I don't know, should we try stuff? Like, let's, is there, here, should we do a cover of this song? You know, it was like, it was so funny. Yeah. Because, I mean, I like, you know, again, all I worried about was perfectionism for so long that I could go in there and do, I mean, I'm not perfect, of course, but there's some songs on that record that are like one take. And there are some songs on that record that was like, yeah, okay. In, in my in my seven days of study, I didn't quite get like what part happens next here. And then, uh, or my favorite. So, you'd like, so what would you do? You'd sort of like punch in, sort yeah, of halfway at, halfway through. Exactly, and you know, so exactly. like, you know, I would just. I'm a perfectionist, as I mentioned. So I would just always be like, again, again, all right, do it again. And then, you know, um, but uh, there was definitely like a song or two that was just like the first time I played it, there it is. Like, oh, awesome. okay, cool. You know, like I'm usually, you know, I no, I don't, uh, let me do that again kind of thing. But there was at least a song <laughs> that I was just like, no, good, good. All right, cool, awesome. And then we'd move on to the next one and I'd be like, all right, again, again. But I like I very much wanted to make sure everything was perfect. Well, on both albums, but this one I had all the control. I didn't have to tell anybody again. I could just click the button and then go again. Um, which is great. It cuts out the middleman, so I could just do it oh, yeah. a thousand times if that's what I wanted to do, you know. Um yeah. and I'm really big on I don't like editing and shit so let's try to leave as little amount of editing as humanly possible and just kick the shit out of the song so i would just yeah. go that oh, yeah. um and yeah. so yeah i mean that's how i was doing that and again the same thing with nexus but on expensive studio time <laughs> you know so it was like all right set up the kit in five seconds all right here we go you know like set up come on guy mic the kit already what are we doing what are we, what are we waiting for Tough up like I want to go, and then you know, 
just bam. And it was the other funny thing is I'm uh, I'm very much a night person, so I had to go from waking up at like noon to being at the <laughs> studio ready to go at eight in the morning. It was just like, <laughs> fuck. So yeah, um, that's a, that would culture shock. That would have been the hardest part of the whole process. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it, oh man, but honestly, it was that. Uh, Recording Connexus was a lot of fun for me. And I got one time, Dino, go, uh, hey, maybe you try something. Like, <laughs> did what? Like, did you ask him if he was feeling okay? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, that me trying something is on uh, Utopia song. I forgot the full title of it. That's uh, yeah. There is, there is my one try something part is on that song. Oh yeah. Um, but cool. uh, I mean, still like you know, obviously I'm all over that record doing my thing, minus the one song that uh, uh, Dean Castronovo is on. But um, uh, everything else, I have my thing. But that was the one song with the like, wow, okay, a moment of improv, and then um, yeah, it was cool. It's cool, just write a thing, I guess. Um, we'll have to chuck that on and have a bit of a closer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then this one, this one, there's a lot of uh, a lot of that. So ha ha, everybody. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. But still, I mean, again, if you don't like the drums on this record, you're gonna have to blame Dino far more than me. So just remember that. <laughs> Like you, but if you love, but if you love, or if you love the drums on this record, ah, oh, my, yeah, oh my, <laughs> totally me. I did everything. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, whatever part you think is the coolest, that was my idea. Just... <laughs> yeah, got it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> we read you. <laughs> All right. Well, well, we'll move on. Um, so I was just going to ask a bit. Do you? How did you feel about the announcement of the GoFundMe? And did you feel like that was you know that there, there, there's been upgrades that were worth worth pushing for by going for the the GoFundMe. I would say uh, a million percent because yeah. um, I, I think I was I kind of told you about how the 2017 record was. It seemed rushed and it just didn't seem like it was what it should have been. And mm. um, I mean the production uh, actually. Again, like I said, I finished the drums and then I ignored it. So I don't even know if there's a if there's a finished version. I have no idea. Like mm -hmm. I I like gave up. I'm like, screw everything. Let me do other stuff because this sucks. Um but this one, uh yeah, well, I mean, um they wanted to put in for okay, let's get real drums, like real drums, like 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 very real. And Andy Sneed <laughs> even even mentioned that like He's gonna use some of the real sounds. Like, wait, I don't believe you, but sure, you know. Uh, <laughs> all I get out of here is like awesome sounding shit. So there's no reason why it wouldn't be like, yeah, use use this. Yeah. Uh, if, you're, if, if you're sound replacing anyway, you're sound replacing with another sound that was recorded in a studio as well. Yeah, but I hate that. Screw that, man. Like, yeah, I know, uh, I know, but like, it's like, it's like, well, if your sounds good. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. If my shit sounds good, which it does, I mean, I can tell you this. Um, I've, only, <laughs> I've only had positive reaction. And uh, yeah, I had a, a lot of help in making the studio sound awesome. Uh, I have to shout out Lussa Limer for being there basically every day talking to me on the internet going like, all right, um, try this. And I would send him another version. He's like, oh man, that, okay. It doesn't sound as good as it could, and we would just go back and forth until he basically helped me build this thing up to awesome, and um, you know, like that kind of thing. Just it's it meant the world to me, and essentially, yeah. Now, like, yeah, this place sounds amazing. This room sounds incredible. Like, it's the, there. I I don't think there's a better place to record drums. I recorded in a lot of enormous, you know, big expensive studios, and I mean. I, I've at least gotten the feedback that it sounds like I did record in one. So, you know, awesome. Um, the labor. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's worth, it's worth all of the insane time and effort and me and my buddies, like 
<laughs> freaking hammer thing and like build this like everything in this place is like hand he's loving it. Yeah, handmade with he's love. He's loving it. He's loving it. He's, he's built. He's yeah. built something that he's happy with. Yeah, yeah. and he's happy because it's because it sounds great. Good on you, man. That's yeah. wicked. Sick. There you go. <laughs> I appreciate it. You have, <laughs> you have like I guess the Aussie version. Uh, you know Dan Presland um, from Neo Bliviscaris and whatever. Um, yeah. He, uh, he kind of did a similar thing out there. So you've got yeah. one, you've got one of them, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I mean like there are I know he's trying to like have other bands in his studio. I'm like screw this, this is mine. Like <laughs> you know, like, I'll I'll help I'll help friends. You know, if my friends need to record, then sure I'll give you a nice deal. But other than that, I'm it's mine, man. I don't I don't want to like. Uh, <laughs> It's have, not. It's not a high. It's not a commercial hire out studio. Yeah. It's been finely tuned for Mike Heller's sanctuary yeah. drum perfection. Yeah. yeah. I mean, has it got a name? Has it got a name or, or what? Um. So, uh, John Gallagher, the uh, singer and bass player of of Raven, jokingly said, "Like, you should just call it Heaven and Heller Studios." So I'm like, <laughs> "None." That's heaps cool. I like that. That's no fucking studios. sick. Yeah, that's wicked. Heaven and Heller. <laughs> Yeah. That's wicked, man. I love that. <laughs> so there it is. That's a great one. Gold. <laughs> um, All right. So um, this is a – we're getting into a little bit of a new breed TV exclusive now um, um, that you won't hear anywhere else and haven't heard anywhere else. So – We've got it. Uh, we've got some exclusive news from Mr. El Presidente, Mr. Dino Cazares himself, that a previous Fear Factory album um, that didn't have live drums is getting live drums and also getting a new mix. Can you tell us which one it is? And are you excited about it? No, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so. The Industrialist, um, which never had real drums, um, is going to be, at least as far as drums go, re-recorded um, here in my glorious studio. Um, in, in the finely tuned sanctuary. Finely tuned sanctuary. Um, where I will very meticulously spend another... I don't know, uh, 24 hours with Damien going, is this snare okay for you? And then oh, uh, you have no idea, man. Damien. <clears throat> uh, yeah, he perfectionist. He puts you under the pump. Imagine two perfectionists yeah. working together. Oh, oh dude, it was, it was hilarious. Like, I'd play <laughs> half a song and send it to him, and he'd be like, oh, man, I liked it before. And I'm like, so did I, but you told me to change it. No. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, we were just like, okay, let, let's see what you can do. All right. Awesome, and then I did a take of the song, and he's like, "Okay, take is great, but the snare sounded better before." And I'm like, "All right, I'll, I'll do the whole thing." But th that actually happened. Um, but that was the thing. He was um, he was looking for something specific, and you know, when there you have a producer who's got something, you just do it, right? Like, all right, he's in charge. Even though he's my friend, and I make fun of him for being French and stuff. Like, uh, <laughs> the day, he's the one who's doing. Anyway, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. But yes, the enough. Right. <laughs> the yeah. I will be recording real drums on, and it will um, get a release. Yeah, alongside the original. It's not trying to replace the original. I mean, yeah. So, so apparently, because Mechanized and the Industrialists aren't on streaming services in the U.S. at the moment, they're here in Australia. Oh man, we got them all in Australia. We got all of them. We got everything in Australia. That's <laughs> brilliant, and but um, yeah, Mechanized and the Industrialists aren't on Spotify or streaming services. Um, so apparently, Dino's um, trying. Dino's working on getting um, Mechanized and the Industrialists on there. So this one's going to be when it's done. It's going to be added alongside the original. So yeah, and so we're going to be able to have a bit of a. You know, a bit of a flick around it and listen to yeah. a bit of Mike's uh, flair. Yeah, I think, well, I think the industrialists really needed it, sort of thing. So it's I awesome agree. I agree. Yeah, you know, I think it just goes to show every time, 
well, not every time, but when they've had a, a drum machine on the record, I think there was, you could hear the difference. Even though it was Fear Factory, like, well, maybe a drum machine can work for Fear Factory sound. But, yeah, I think, I think it's it's welcome news for sure. Mm. And I think is is uh, the industrial is going to get like a, it's going to get another mix too, obviously. It has to, yeah, because, I mean, yeah. Instead of the electronic elements that you had before, that like it was this in the box and like, oh, okay, here it is. Now you have real drums to deal with. And uh, well, that's the thing. Um, I'm hoping we can make sure it's going to be all of the real sounds. Um, and yeah. that means just, yeah, somebody has to mix that and make it sit in nicely with the other stuff. And of course, I guess, what is the point really of, of doing it if it sounded exactly the same, but guess what? There's a human back there, you know? Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think, you know, um, cause that was, that was the part that was missing. And when I, like when I heard it for the first time, um, I, I don't know, you know how you get so finely tuned to a band and, you know, that when something's different, you know, it's different. You don't know why it's different. You can't, you can't pinpoint it. You can't pick it. Mm-hmm. But but you know and you can and you can hear something you're just like ah I don't know but something's going on here yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean so okay uh, back when I auditioned for Fear Factory the, the the industrialist was done not out yet and um I remember when Dino called me to say like okay we're gonna fly you in tomorrow um it was basically like oh okay um. You, you have a new album? Who played on it? And he's told me a drum machine. And my answer was, why the fuck did you do that? <laughs> and I mean, like, you know, he didn't, he wasn't like sitting there going like, no, this is the best idea ever. It's, it was like, you know, for what they needed to do, that's what they needed to do. And I guess it just kept machine rolling, I guess, if you can see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now it's a matter of, uh, well, at least I hope it's going to be a matter of my flair that I can add to it. Let's let's hope so. Um, yeah. And it's not going to be, well, it exists already, so just do it exactly like it is. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Um, but yeah. uh, we'll see. Um, but uh, either way, it's 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 either, either way, even if I just did the drum machine, it would be way better, I think, already. <laughs> but yeah. I have a feeling it's not going to be that. Um, yeah, yeah. Could be wrong, but uh, yeah, and I think it'll be it'll be really cool because it'll you know it'll seem like a proper Fear Factory record, you know, like the way you want to hear Fear Factory. You don't want to hear yeah. the machine yeah. doing the machine parts. You want to hear the human doing the machine parts. Like what's yeah, that's right. I know, I, and and I know it sounds weird to like to be against using a drum machine on a Fear Factory record, mm-hmm. but. There's there's something about the human element, like being so good at that sound and sounding like I don't know it's weird like sounding like a machine. I know that all the Fear Factory fans know exactly what I'm talking about. It's it's a bit like um, with Demanufacture. Raymond was tasked with we want you to emulate a drum machine, but it's being performed by a human being. And then everyone was like hearing that album for the first time, going, "Is this actually a real player, or are we hearing?" Trickery. Um, so I think that's sort of what created that kind of vibe with Fear Factory sound is that you were sort of amazed that you were hearing something performed yeah. by human beings on that level. And because and because you're listening to it and you know that it's a person, you can appreciate it a lot, yeah, a whole lot more. You just like you're like, like fucking hell, man. Listen to those drums. Like he is like he's nailing that. It sounds brilliant. And like he's really playing. He's really playing that. And then when you go and watch it live. You know, you connect. You just connect with it better. Like, if if I if I went to a Fear Factory show and I watched you play like industrial songs, um, I'd just be like, "Fuck, Mike's doing a really good job of like copying what the drum machine did on that album." But <laughs> if I if when I but when when we went to the show and we watched you play the Genesis songs, it's like, yeah, it's like these are my these are these are Mike's songs. He played these. Yeah. Yeah, and nice. and you just and you just connect. I don't know you connect with the band a whole lot more. 
that way, I reckon. Yeah. Just as a, just from a fan's perspective. I, I agree 100%. I mean, the, the thing is, okay, they have, like, emulators that you can do a... Okay, you can't do the best job, but you can do somewhat of a job of recording a guitar, even. So you could essentially yeah. have just done the entire record with machines and just had a, a human sing on it. Or you could just replace the human with one of those robot voices, and there you go. And it's the whole right, like, like yeah. what the hell is that? I don't understand. I don't understand drum machine bands. I know a lot of them exist and stuff. I just, I don't, I don't personally understand it. I think like mm. the whole fun is like, man, people did this. Or unless, of course, they're trying to make sure it's like, oh, well, you know, no human can play this because it's like two, it sounds like three drummers at the same time or something. Yeah. Like, sure. I, I get it then, I guess, but it's for that's for like a different type of art. But for me, it's yeah. been like again, I, I want to open the album and go, you know, drums played by uh, <laughs> humans, pad, you know, like you know, none of that crap. I want to hear it, uh, and, and I want to hear the drums, and I want to, yeah, again, see the drums. Like, is there there's a uh, you know a slight bit of footage from the recording of this uh, new album, right? Uh, uh, there is more that he one day will be released. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but also interestingly on that clip, real kick drums, no samples. Look at that. Like uh, hey, it, 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 it can be it done. Happened. Factory, right? yeah. Real yeah. kick drum, uh, no triggers. Like, oh my God. Uh, but at least, um, <laughs> you know, we'll see what happens on the record. If it's just real kick drums, I don't think it will. Be. Um, it will be your factory sound, of course. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, everything else should be real. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. Um, but uh, I well, I mean, I know it will be real. I don't know if it'll be sample enhanced or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, this yeah. is like a long, annoying uh, uh, process of of that. But at least most of the records I do, and out of here, almost ninety five percent have been just real drums because the drums sound awesome. So here's hoping for that on the industrialist and. Um, I don't know if it's going to be called the Industrialist or like the Industrialist re-release, or will it be like the remanufacture of demanufacture? Like how will it be done? Yeah. I don't know. No, I, no hey, idea. Can, can you wait and see on that? Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I guess we will see. <laughs> and, uh, I'm excited to find out. Um, yeah. But I'm. Ready to first. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to do it. I played at least some of those songs. A bunch and got to hate the drum machine while I was playing them. So yeah. now we'll see if I can uh, make it awesome in a way that uh, is appropriate, I guess. Not just drum yeah. solos over choruses. Um, <laughs> although I think there's some room for that. You know, just saying. Well, uh, at least at least you can like at least you can like really get to know because it's you know because the album's done. Mm -hmm. You can spend you can spend as much time with it as you as you need to, I guess. That's mm -hmm. and you can hear and you can hear the vocals and you can you know, not like not like the new album where a lot of the vocals were missing. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. Um, I know exactly what's happening on the industrialist, so yeah, I can do uh, within you know again if uh, if I'm allowed, uh, I can do kind of whatever. Um, and I know, like, again, something to me that goes along with the vocal might not go along the vocal to Dino. He might, uh, be like, ah, oh, that sounds, I don't like it. It gets in the way. I'm like, all right, well, you know, sure. I mean, you're the boss, man. So, um, but, uh, on this, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't have, um, vocals while recording the new album simply because, um, it's like, then I could very heavy, heavily focus on just the guitars and making it the, I mean, you know, I think he purposely didn't, he's like, don't pay attention to the vocal. I want it to really fit, like match the guitar more than any other record. It just, uh, and, yeah. uh, and that's the thing I'm hoping therefore, you know, it leads to, you know, a different vibe than um, what was on, previous records kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, gotcha. well, I, I also believe, if I'm not mistaken, that at least a lot of them, a lot of these records were done with uh, vocals being last anyway. So like 
they they it was sort of approached that way to begin with. Um, but I guess uh, at least on the industrialist, then I can use that to my advantage and just play, you know, all right, well, let's let's follow follow Bert on this. Like it didn't do it on the original, so let's see what happens if I do that. Um, of, of course, the kicks are still going to be doing whatever Dino does, but you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah suddenly don't, that. don't mess with the kicks, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a, not a problem. I understand that is that is the <laughs> of, of <laughs> in your factory. The kicks, yeah. do what the guitar does, done. Okay, um, <laughs> but there are kick fills on the new record, so we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't go against his riffs, though. I promise you, it's good. Uh, yeah, it can't is. bloody, can't bloody wait. We're excited to hear it, man. Yeah, Me sure. too. Excited uh, for it to come out and for people to hear mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, see you, Bon. We got one more left, Mike. Hit it. All right, just a bit of a throwaway one. But if you had to use one word to sum up the new album from your perspective and your involvement, what would you use? Crap. No, uh, it would be. <laughs> no, uh, that's like that is a really hard question because um, what I'm hoping is uh, now I'm going to give you like twelve words all because they're <laughs> one word separately. Um, I'm going to say, uh, uh, like, different, but a positive thought about what different means. Like, okay, different, good. Good, good, different. Like a, uh, um, I want to say, you know, kind of like uh, a new approach to an old thing or something to that effect. But you know, it's well, it's of course, it's it's impossible without just coming up with some, uh, um, you know, cliche, unanimous or something. You know, some like really vague word that can hopefully that can mean something about anything. But uh, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> when comparing this album to the, the previous album, uh, it's yeah, it's different. It's new, new, new. That's the there you go. How would you describe right. the album in one word? New. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you describe the new album? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> classic, classic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Awesome. All right. Well, Mike, thank you so much for chatting with us today. It's been great hanging out. Um, I hope that everyone's enjoyed watching. Um, we've certainly enjoyed having a chat and, and and listening to all the stories and just how the how the new album's shaping up. And I'm sure they tuned know, out, they they tuned out after three minutes of my rambling. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> if you're still with us, if you're still here. <laughs> you're true. Yeah. 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 No, nah, thanks, thanks very much, man. Thanks, um, yes. We can't wait to catch up with you at the next Fear Factory live show. Yes. So, and yeah. I dare say we'll, we'll be there and we'll have another chat and, um, yeah, we'll hang out. And Don't and, worry. Uh, Your face is as, like, do not allow these two people <laughs> on premises. It would be great. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll get off the man. Can't wait. I well, hope. We'll be there. We'll be there. And absolute shit out of you. Don't you worry. <laughs> Can't stop it. Awesome. I won't have a awesome. shitty beard, I promise. So it'll be... Oh, it'll be <laughs> good. I'm liking it. You see what's up with it. Yeah. All right, Mike. Well, thank you very much, man, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. You too, mate. Cheers. All right, Steve. I'm how good was that? Yeah, that was wicked. Uh, that was. Really good to chat to Mike. He's really awesome, friendly guy. Yeah, he's he's... I love chatting to Mike. He's just <laughs> he's just so much fun to chat to and just to hang out with and just I could talk to him for hours and hours and hours and I think we did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. But yeah, no, I mean he definitely look he definitely seems to be a lot happier with the direction now than where he was at with it in twenty seventeen. I think so, yeah. yeah. So I think yeah, by the sounds of it there was a few decisions made back in twenty seventeen that he wasn't really vibing on and now it's good to hear that he is really vibing on the album. Like yeah. he's 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 pumped about it now. He's he's loving it. So yeah. So yeah, yeah it's uh, it's good to hear. Yeah, and it was awesome. We got to see and hear a bit about the studio he's built for himself, which he seems he's really stoked about. And yeah. good on him. Yeah, he's loving his new studio. Hey, like it's like 
all the tours that he's been on and like all the money he's made he's really put back into the studio and um he's just made it sound apparently you know he's getting great yeah he's, he's it. made it sound amazing and like a big studio and it's it's his and yeah he's just he's just loving it which is which yeah, is awesome, awesome. I think we uh, he's uh, named it possibly Heaven and Hella Studios. <laughs> How good is That's that? awesome. Heaven and Hella. <laughs> I like it. I like that. But yeah, um, chatting about the GoFundMe and stuff. Like, um, sounds like Mike's definitely like really on board with this, and it sounds like he he's so happy that it's been given all this, and he's ha- and he's had the opportunity to like record the drums properly this time yep. Seabot yeah get a full a full performance on, of him from it yeah definitely yeah so that's a that's a that's something that I think without even hearing the album it's a, a no brainer for me I, yeah I agree. guess you know what I mean like yep. it's just you know it just it just feels right after the events of the industrialist there was a lot of negative feedback about the program drums on that and I think to not go there again would be the best thing, I I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Speaking of the industrialist, oh, ho, ho, ho. that's getting a bit of a redo, oh, ho, ho, ho. bit of a do over, a new breed exclusive C bomb, bit of a makeover. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so Mike's going to be redoing the industrialist drums. We're going to hear the industrialist for for the second time, I guess. Um, in a new light remixed yeah. with live drums and man I can't fucking wait to hear that yeah absolutely keen to hear that I'm absolutely um, stoked and yeah so for anyone that's been frustrated about not being able to access that or mechanize on the streaming services stay tuned because it sounds like they're going to be getting their their way on there soon yeah mechanize should be up shortly hopefully cool cool um, and what was Mike's final word on the new album C-Bomb well it's new and it's different <laughs> But that's good. What's the word on the new album, Mike? Oh, new. But yeah, he did say also different. Um, and yeah, we. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to yeah, hear. Yeah, I'm just it. getting more wait. keen, getting more hype now. So <laughs> hopefully, we're getting close to to hearing some new stuff. Yeah, I can't wait, man. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Uh, the new breed on the new breed page where um, we're getting a little bit of a following now and we're we're pretty happy with so thank you very much guys Cheers. leave a comment you know tell us what you love what you don't love about the uh, about the show or whatever we take feedback and you know if we don't like it we'll probably just ignore it but <laughs> <laughs> that's all right <laughs> it is um, so yeah thanks for watching and um, yeah we'll catch us again on the uh, on the next episode. So until then, long live Fear Factory. Short live Troll Chris. That was alright. Yeah, that was good. I liked that one. Me too. That flowed. Me too.